civil war is an ongoing thing, right? right. It hasn't gone. Like everywhere else you guys have moved on, we have not. It's an, and you'll see a couple of slides allude to that with the local work and research we're doing at Mary Washington. Um, why I'm probably here is because I have worked with a series of people at University of Mary Washington to kind of define and create an online open publishing platform, what we call UMW Blogs. And I'll talk about this at some length, try not too much, because it's not particularly, I want to say, this is the model. I don't think there's any one model for open teaching and learning. I think there's a wide array of models, and we have this unbelievable platform that's been sitting on our lap for almost 20 years now called the web, right? And the open web, in many ways, is the platform through which open education happens. That's kind of part of what I'll be arguing today. Like, the web, as we know it right now, has an unbelievable array of resources, right? And one of the things that we've happened, or has happened, in our discussions about open educational resources, or open teaching, is that the open educational resource has kind of become this rarefied thing outside of the way we look at the web. And I would ask you to think, you know, maybe that's true, and there are specific resources that people are developing, these open textbooks, that are going to be unbelievably beneficial to a wide range of students. And the open course library that's happened here in Washington is going to be one of the most innovative practices for getting that out. And I love the way they've reimagined it from the LMS to Google Docs. And I think there's a lot of value in thinking about open, accessible, easy tools. Right? And that's one of the kind of lessons that you are teaching everybody. You don't need me to come here and show you this. You're already taking what was happening in the LMS and you're replacing it, these open source libraries, into something like Google. Why? Because it's easy because it's access and you don't have to reproduce your work. And I think that when you make it easy for faculty to do the work who are already overworked, right, who already have the stresses of too many students in their classes, well, I think it makes a difference. Now, I'm going to be talking a bit about that today, but I have a resource site here that I'm going to point everyone to. You have internet, you have the uh, web in front of you, you have your computers in front of you. Um, there's a site I created, it's called Adopting Open, one word, adoptingopen.umwblogs.org. I'll say it again. Adoptingopen.umwblogs.org. One of the things I'm really looking forward to today is that I come and I present, <coughs> I present regularly um, in various places, but I never really have time to kind of accentuate my presentations with discussions and with interaction. Well, the nature of this day we're going to allow that. And so you on the web and looking up things and interacting here is not only encouraged, it's expected. There's going to be kind of some places for you to interject at various places, at least throughout this morning. So when we get to this site, everybody find the site for me? Not yet. Yep. Not yet? Yep. OK. Um, you're going to see a couple of things. There's presentation, which you can follow along. There are links where you can follow up the links I talk about as we go through this presentation. Um, but there's also this thing, submit a resource. Check that out. I just was talking about um, Google Apps. Now let me ask, the community colleges in Washington State, do you guys have access to Gmail and Google Apps? You guys are on, on Gmail and Google Apps, right? So you're well ahead of the game in some ways, right? Yes. On our own. On your own. Oh, so it's not system-wide. Well, yeah, some schools. Some schools do, so that's not consistent. There are 34 schools, right? And so some did make that change, some didn't. Okay. So really anyone can get access to Google or Gmail and uh, Google Apps, so that's not really the issue. But you'll see I have submitted a, uh, a, submit a resource here. It's a quick form I created in Google Apps using Google Forms, and I just embedded it in this space. This is a WordPress blog. I'll talk a little bit more about this space in a bit. But you'll notice I've put in a form for everyone here to submit an open resource that they use currently in their teaching and learning. It doesn't have to be one. You can do this several times. But I'm just going to create, with your help, a quick list. And this link here will point to the spreadsheet where you've submitted it, where you can just put in a URL of a resource you use for teaching and learning on a regular basis. Right? And I want to look at that list with you in a second, 
Because I think it's interesting to think about what we think of as open resources. Yes, and yes. Can you read that URL again? Yes, absolutely. Oh, you know what? Adopting yeah. open, one word, yeah. dot umwblogs.org. With S on that blog. Yeah, blogs. Uh, sorry, that might be the confusion. Let me see if I can write it here. Thing. of the day. 